Here we have our list application from last time. We have our to-do list, we have our books list, everything looks great, we can add things you know, to our list here. But what if, you know, my professor gave me an ISBN number, but I didn't really know what book that was. I could add it to my list, but it would just show up as, you know, some number here. It wouldn't actually be, you know, an, a title, an author that I could actually go to the store and look for. That's what we're going to add in this video. We're going to use the Google Books API to go ahead and search for what that ISBN number stands for, and then it's going to return, you know, a title, an author that then we can add to the list. And so we're going to go ahead to our code, check out what we have here. And in order to add an item to the list, we have to call this add item function. And this add item function is in our controller. Here it is. And what we'll have to do is we'll have to check if, you know, a given item that we add is an ISBN number. And if it is, we convert that ISBN number into like a little, you know, blur with the title, the author, whatever information we wanted to have. And so in this, you know, tutorial here, we're going to define an ISBN number as something that is 10 or 13 in length, meaning it's, you know, 10 characters, it's 13 characters, but those are the only two options. And it has to consist of only numbers. And so you can't have like a letter A because that's not in an ISBN number. And so in order to check if something's an ISBN number, we'll go if item.length equals 10 or item.length equals 13. We got that first part of our if there. We're good, but we also need to check if, you know, it has only numbers, if our, you know, item here has only numbers. And if that's true and it's length 10 or 13, then it is in fact an ISBN number. And so we'll go ahead and just print to the console to see if this test works. And so we'll say ISBN meaning it's an ISBN number. Otherwise, we'll print out that it's not an ISBN number. And so this is looking great, but we still have to implement this has only numbers function. It doesn't exist within our code as of yet, unfortunately. So we're gonna go ahead and implement it here with function has only numbers. Our input's gonna be the item, and we're gonna somehow test if this item consists of only digits. This is gonna be a little bit strange. It's gonna be something you probably haven't seen before, regular expressions, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. And so we're gonna say return slash caret square bracket zero through nine asterisk dollar sign slash dot test item. So let's get into what this means. Basically, this first part is called a regular expression and it basically defines, you know, a set of rules that a given input can have. In this case, it's saying any inputs with only digits will match for this regular expression. This will make, you know, more sense in a minute, but basically this is defining a set of rules and if the item matches those set of rules and, you know, follows those set of rules, then this whole expression will return true. If item does not follow what this has set, then this whole expression will return false. So what rules does this regular expression define? Well, we'll do it right now. This first slash basically says we're starting, you know, the definition of a given expression. This caret means we're gonna start our matching at the beginning of the input versus like the middle or end. So say, you know, you had an expression that said like, oh, the last character must be an A or something, like then you probably would not have this caret here. But we want, you know, to start our matching at the beginning because everything must be a digit. This zero through nine here basically means that the input should match any digit zero through nine and combined with like the first caret, it means that the first character should be a digit. This asterisk here means that we can have any number of the previous expression. And so we said, okay, here, we, you know, we have to start with a digit and then this portion right here basically says, oh, anything after that also has to be a digit until, you know, you get to the next rule. And so we could have, you know, five digits, 10 digits, whatever it is, but it needs to start with a digit and it needs to continuously do digits after that until the end of the input, which is what this dollar sign means. And then the slash here just means this is the end of our regular expression. And then we test it on our item. Does our item have all digits? If that's true, this will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. And if it returns true, then it will return true here. And then this whole thing will be true and it will be an ISBN number as long as the item is length 10 or 13. So we'll save this here and then go back to our web page. 
we're gonna have to do some weird stuff in order for this to work because of caching issues and it thinks like I haven't changed my code but we wanted to do the new version of the code but this will work. We'll go ahead and open the console here too so we can see what's printed out and so we'll try adding a non-ISBN number. It's not an ISBN. We'll try adding something that's 10 digits in an ISBN number. It is an ISBN number, great. Let's try adding an A to that, it's not. Let's try keeping it 10 characters and adding an A at the end, and it's not. And so this is great, that means our test for an ISBN number, as of right now, works. But we still need to link it to our Google Books API, so that way we can convert this number into a title and author. And so we're gonna go ahead and go back to our code and we're gonna add a service called HTTP. And so this service is gonna allow us to get information from the internet. And so we'll cover services in a later video. This is just an introduction, but basically it allows us to hit the Google Books API endpoint so that way we can get data from Google Books and convert our ISBN number into you know, an actual title and author. And so there we go. And to see how this will actually work, I did some research and found this little Google Books API link. And so here we are, we have the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter. This is an ISBN number I just looked up from the internet, but as we can see, we have a lot of data here. We have the title, we have the authors, and it's all in this JSON object. JSON is just a way we can organize data in JavaScript, and so it's kind of like an array object sort of thing, but basically it just organizes our data and allows us to access it easily. So what's going to happen in our code is we're going to go ahead and say, hey, I want, you know, the data at this link, and then we're going to go ahead and get that data and bring it back into the code and then access what's in here and then add, you know, whatever we want to add to the list. Going back to the code, we can get this data by going http.get, so we're making a get request because we want to get data from the internet from this link, and then we're going to go ahead and put this link in here, but instead of this given ISBN number, because then it would be the same data all the time, we're going to do a plus item, because what we're going to input as an item is the ISBN number. Then we'll do dot success, and so if this request is successful and we get the data, then we want to run a function with that data as the input. And then we're going to do stuff with that data inside of this function. So if we go back to our JSON object, we can see how we could iterate through this data and we could get what we need. So we want, say, the title and the author. And so here, if I go inside of the object, then I go into items, and then the first element of items has volume info, which in turn has our title and our author. And so keeping this in mind, we're going to do item list dot push. And so we're going to add the title and then we're going to go ahead and access the title from this JSON object. And we're going to go data dot items at zero dot volume info dot title. And so this is going to get our title. So we have our data. We have our items, we go to the first element of items, we get our volume info, and then we get our title. And we're gonna do the same exact thing except get the authors next. And so we're gonna say plus, do some formatting, data.items at index zero, we'll get the volume info, and then we'll get the authors. And so here we have quite a bit of code. We have this HTTP get request. We get it from this URL with a given item, with a given ISBN number that the user inputs. If it's successful, we run a function with the data and from the data, that JSON object, we go ahead and access its items, its volume info, and eventually its title. And then we access its data, items, volume, and its authors. And then we have this little statement that we add to our items list that reminds us, oh, this is the book we need to buy. Now, all we need to do is put this item list line inside of our else statement so that way we don't add, you know, this title, author, blurb, and the ISBN number. And so if we save this, we'll go ahead and go over here. We'll do some caching things to make sure it doesn't run our old code. Go ahead and paste this in. And there we go. We have title, Harry Potter 1 in the Philosopher's Stone, author, JK Rowling. I hope you learned something in this video. Next Friday, we'll go more into Angular services. See you then.